Hi, my name is Lydia Yerevenka and welcome to Ukrainian Fintech Hub. Today we are going to talking about an extremely important topic that concerns everyone in Ukraine – volunteering. Konstantin Koshalenko, Deputy Minister of Social Policy of Ukraine, will help us to get to the bottom of this. Hello, Lydia. Hi, Konstantin. Would you tell us how this extraordinary platform called Yadopomoha came about? You know, from the first day of hostilities, the Ministry of Social Policy realized that people would need extra support in addition to the already existing system of social protection. Because due to Russian military aggression, many people have lost their jobs and were forced to move to other safer regions. And they need help. Only during last week, 150,000 people were registered as internally displaced persons. Millions of people have remained in areas of active hostilities. Millions of people are in the temporarily occupied territories. And all these people need support. That's why, in a short period of up to seven days, the team of the Ministry of Social Policy with the Ministry of Digital Transformation, together with UNDP and volunteers, have developed a platform called Yadopomoha. This platform helps to gather information about the needs of people who require support and, on the other hand, to give this information to those who can provide such support. It comes to food, medicine and even transportation or evacuation services. Thank you. Regarding your volunteering activity on social media, it inspires us to do something important for Ukraine. And there are many people who I'm pretty sure wants to join your platform. Tell me if Ukrainians can join this project now and how with resources they have. For me, volunteering is a small part of the day, which happens on the way between home and office. Sure, I try to help some people personally, but it is still important for us to build systematic solutions that can meet the needs of thousands and millions of people. The platform is an opportunity to gather all the needs of citizens. It aggregates all those who asked for help. And also, it is open for registration of all philanthropists. These can be individuals, foundations, commercial organizations and associations. For instance, the Ukrainian Blockchain Association also joined our platform. They have resources, they have products to deliver, they have volunteers. And here on the platform, they receive targeted information about people who need help. Anyone who joins as a volunteer can see exactly where the people are, region, city, as well as choose the category of needs. For example, if I can help with food, I will choose only people who need food and only those who are in my particular area, and I will help them as effectively as possible. And those who are able to deliver aid via logistic operators or postal services can operate across the country focusing on the humanitarian aid group they have. At the moment, the news says that we have to trust only proven sources, and in fact, it's a great to hear such a message. Would you tell us how ordinary people in general can find information about Yedopomoha and which media or other information resources can be trusted in that? Generally, we disseminate information through official channels, such as websites and social pages of the Ministry of Social Policy and the Ministry of Digital Transformation. We also rely on reputable media that bring information to Ukrainian people, such as television and YouTube channels like yours, so that everyone knows that help is nearby and it can be requested. You also can find the Yedopomoga website simply through Google or under the tag Yedopomoha and join in. The platform is made as simple as possible and you can use it from your computer or even smartphone. We are working every day to increase the functionality of the platform and make it easy to use.
Certainly today we will talk about what to expect in the future, and I have such a question already prepared. What will happen after the war is over? But now I want to ask what are the types of support provided by the platform, and what do we see uh, when we visit this landing? You can help with groceries, medicine, hygiene products, household items, clothes. In general, these are all essentials for people, and in fact, everyone determines such a need for themselves. If we look at the statistics, the demand for food now prevails. Almost 50% of all requests are food kits, long-term food that does not need a refrigerator, etc. This is what people really need. Tell us about uh, the operational process, from the point when you receive a request from the recipient about his needs, how it is processed and how long it takes for the person to get an answer. Thank you for that question. The process is built so that a person fills out a simple form. He gives his phone number, fills his address and the request. All this information is stored in our internal secure database. A philanthropist who registers on the platform can see impersonal information about who needs what. And only after a philanthropist has confirmed his readiness to provide assistance, does the contact center contact us in order to transfer specific data to the citizen to whom the delivery is to be made? Also, at this moment, there is a verification of the citizen, whether he is in touch or the need for him is still relevant. Thus, we know for sure that when a philanthropist starts working, he will bring a person exactly what he needs and what he needs now. The same user can act as a philanthropist as well as a recipient. For example, if a person needs something today, she can make a request. When her financial situation stabilizes in a couple of weeks and she will be able to help someone else, she will also have the opportunity to do so under the same account. For those volunteers who understand our functionality, we have created a Facebook community, and in this community we discuss both humanitarian aid and technical issues related to the work of the platform. We understand that it is necessary to make a quick decision, and it must be stable, scalable and professional. Let's get back to the statistics. How many people have already received help and how many volunteers have joined? You're also talking about one of the foundation or an association that helps you. Just excited to hear numbers. Talking about numbers, during the launch week of the platform, we received more than 4,000 appeals from citizens, and more than 40,000 citizens visited the platform. 97 of these requests have been closed instantly, and about 70 are in the progress, so people can help today or tomorrow. Every day, we increase the place of attracting philanthropists, volunteers and donors, because at the moment there are more requests than people who are ready to help. But we are balancing it, and I am sure that in a couple weeks we will reach thousands of applications that will be processed and closed weekly. Can people or companies join you and help with cars, drivers or transportation? Do you have such information about cars? or services that are in demand right now. Anyone who has logistic resources also can use our platform to find someone in need. In fact, I knew volunteers in Kyiv who said that they had a car, had some money and fuel, and were ready to help someone. I showed them a smartphone and said, look, here you choose an area, Dniprovsky, Pichersky, Darnitsky district, where it is convenient for you to help, choose a category, choose people and do it, and guys turn on very quickly this way. As for the demand for evacuation, in fact, we have 57% of requests for food, 15% of hygiene products, less than 10% for transport and evacuation services. I think this is due to the fact that Ukrainian railways are working heroically, 
Now, so people moving between cities can also move by railway transport. You communicate a lot with volunteers. Can you share your opinion on the situation with volunteering in general? What do you think about it? In fact, my understanding of volunteering is as follows. Volunteers always complete and close areas of responsibility that the state has not yet had time to close. At times like this, when a certain problem just grows every day and when it involves millions of people, when things that happen have never happened to us before, and I hope after our victory they will never happen again. It is important that in addition to power and people already working for the state, volunteer movements are included side by side. And the most important thing is coordination. A lot of people say they are ready to help, but they don't know how to do that. The platform Yedo Pomoha is the answer to the questions of such people. I can see that our international partners provide us with a lot of humanitarian aid. And can it be that we in Ukraine will not have enough hands to handle it? What is your opinion about it? You know, that's the challenge of involvement and coordination of volunteers, because there is a huge demand for certain incoming humanitarian aid in the western regions of Ukraine. Then there is a logistical task of transferring humanitarian aid to other regions. Here our regional military administrations work harmoniously, so this logistics is going well. And finally, for example, in Kyiv, when humanitarian aid comes here, it is important to sort it out and deliver it to people. Because a lot of citizens are afraid to move around the streets, people with disabilities and people who have little kids. And here it is important finally bringing help to the people, because the places where people gather aren't safe now. Is it possible that in future we will have a centralized system that will unite volunteers who want and can help? You know, volunteers are the same people just like us, with all the problems that casual people have. Those who actually help others, they also may lose loved ones, lose business, lose money and so on. Therefore, each volunteer is different. Someone is ready to work full-time month after month, day after day. Someone is ready to help only after work. Someone does not even have time to help at all, but can transfer some small amount of money to someone. It's impossible to systematize it so fast, to bring it to line like some government organization and so on. But this is the volunteer power. Kyiv is now like a beehive, which no one will ever defeat because of the fact people organize themselves. The government only sets the direction and provides such platforms that help people to figure out what is needed right now and right here. That's how state administrations are acting, that's how ministries are acting. So, to my mind, we already have such a flexible coordination system of volunteering and it isn't correct to build another solid one. However, volunteers unite in charitable foundations in volunteer organizations. For example, we cooperate with one called Spiv Deer. They have their hubs in every region, hundreds of volunteers, and they are ready to help, and we are ready to interact with them as well. We are ready to exchange the data with all such serious volunteer organizations. Relatively speaking, we are ready to transfer all the requests of citizens, which, for example, we do not have resources to close right now, to another volunteer association to close those requests. And vice versa, we are ready to integrate and accept requests from citizens from those volunteer organizations that, for example, have received applications from people, have done a lot, but have empty warehouses so far. 
This is such an important work that takes place under the hood of the platform. We can't integrate with each association where three, four, five volunteers working, but all significant associations, which process hundreds of requests, thousands of requests, will be integrated step by step with us in order to work together to prevent duplications of requests of citizens and to close those requests faster. Totally agree with you that volunteers are heroes nowadays. These are people who really do extraordinary things. And I want to say great thanks to all of them for what they do. That's true. And I also want to know this, that in fact, those people who now have tasks, have jobs, they go through all this stress more easily compared to people who are in some kind of stupor, continuously listing news feeds. And from this, they are even more in such a bad condition. I'm very grateful to fate that I have such a workload now and have this work non-stop. Because I don't have time to be nervous. I don't have time to be distracted by some kind of stress. So I recommend anyone sitting at home who has some kind of stress that they just try to opt in. Just try to help the neighbor senior lady. You don't need to go far and hard. Just take her some groceries, and in such a way, you will be involved in such a way, it will be easier for you, and your help will also be implemented for the person suffering. I'd like to remind that this platform Yadopomoha was created by the Minister of Social Policy of Ukraine, the Ministry of Digital Transformation and the UNDP. Do you plan to create any more such platforms in the nearest future? Our team has a lot of projects now. Some of them are well known. For example, the registration of internally displaced persons was implemented in just a few days. And every day tens of thousands of people began to register in states. Before that, it was available only in district offices, and now it is available in every government community. Also, this service for registration will be available in the DEA application. People won't be standing in lines and will be able to do it just using a smartphone. We have a number of projects related to the adoption of children after the war, to crossing the border of people with disabilities, etc. We focused exactly on the urgent needs of Ukrainians. We passed all projects that are not related to the current situation, but they are in such an archive, and after our victory, we will return to them. Thank you for your motivation. I'm sure that everyone who watches this video will definitely think about finding time to volunteer and help others, especially since it become much easier after launching Yedopomoga platform. Konstantin Koshalenko, Deputy Minister of Social Policy of the Ukrainian Finte Hub Channel, thank you very much. Thank you. We will win.